Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, week number one of Composer Profiles. Today, we're going to be talking about Percy Granger. Let's get started. <laughs> So Percy Granger was born as George Percy Aldridge Granger. He was an Australian-born composer, born in July of 1882. His father, John Granger, was a renowned architect who had immigrated from Australia from England. Percy's mother, Rose Aldridge, was also an English immigrant who met John and married him in 1880. Now, as a young child, Percy displayed a renowned gift for the arts and music. He only received three formal months of schooling before his mother, and Audiodot began homeschooling him, supervising his literature and musical studies, as well as many other lessons that he often would take. Now, by the age of 10, Percy began taking piano lessons with Louis Pabst, a German immigrant who lived in Australia at the time, was regarded as the best piano teacher in Melbourne, Australia, Percy's hometown. When Pabst migrated back to Germany, his pupil Adeline Burkett took over Percy's lessons. Percy's first composition, might I add, was called A Birthday Gift to Mother, and that dates from 1893. Now, with the help of both Pabst and Burkett, Percy was able to begin public performance of his music, taking in much acclaim from concert goers, up until the point where his mother, who noticed all of this critical acclaim that he was getting, decided that her son should be enrolled in the Hotch Conservatory in Frankfurt, Germany. Now keep in mind, by this time, Percy's only 12 years old. You want to know what I was doing when I was 12 years old? I don't know. That was about 10 years ago. But I have absolutely no clue what I could have been doing. But I know what I was not doing, and that was not performing music that I wrote. Because I hadn't even been a musician that long yet. But anyway, Percy and his mother both moved to Frankfurt, Germany, so Percy could go to the conservatory. He studied music and art with some of the biggest names and biggest pedagogues of the time, taking composition and counterpoint lessons as well. Now, Percy's father, might I add, not to leave him stranded there, returned to England in 1890, ending his marriage with Rose and pretty much forcing her to raise Percy on her own. And now by 1900, Percy completed his work as a student at the Hotch Conservatory performing a solo recital and then relocated to London with his mother, who I'll mention was reported to be working as an English teacher in the conservatory to help support herself and Percy. But it was by this time Percy realized that he would be able to support himself and his mother, so they decided to take up roots from Frankfurt and move themselves to London. Now once in London, Percy made what we would call today a killing by booking himself as a concert pianist in concert halls and people's private homes. Now, he remained in London for quite some time, too. In 1911, he began a large-scale production of his music, most of which can be divided into two separate categories. We'll talk more about that later. It was also at this point that he professionally took on the name Percy Aldridge Granger. Now, because of his prolificness in the concert world in England, he became antiquated with many of the well-known composers of the day. Many of these include Ray Fon Williams, Edvard Grieg, and Richard Strauss. Now, as the years progressed, Percy's mother Rose began to decline significantly in health. And after the outbreak of World War I, and at her suggestion, the two took a tour of America in February of 1915, even to the spite of Percy's British friends. Now, not long after arriving in America in 1917, Percy received news that his father had died from syphilis while over in England. This news tore him between his views on warfare and being a pacifist. So with America's entry into World War I, Percy enrolled in the U.S. Army as a bandsman, though he never saw active service. And it wasn't until... June of 1918 that he actually became a naturalized U.S. citizen. Now, after leaving the military in 1919, Percy began his life as a concert pianist again, with the addition of teaching this time. Amidst all of this, he still found time to compose. He and his mother relocated to a house in White Plains, New York, where they would live for the remainder of their lives. And then, unfortunately, in 1922, Rose's health began to decline severely. Many rumors circulated about her relationship with Percy, ultimately leading to her committing suicide in April of that year while Percy was on tour on the West Coast. Percy continued to travel and perform in the 1920s and 1930s, mostly to Europe and Australia. His largest innovation was the concept and eventual construction of the Granger Museum in Melbourne, Australia in 1932. Uh, the later part of his life is often shadowed by illness, though he did perform up until his death in 1961. It's also noted that Percy did have one daughter, at least one daughter, named Ella, 
It's unclear as to her role in his life and how she came about. There's very little mention about her. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Percy's music can be divided into two categories, original compositions and folk music arrangements. One of Percy's greatest achievements during his career as a musician was the revival of folk music, most of which would he arrange for band or orchestra. Of his most notable folk music arrangements, you may recognize some of these titles. Three of them are Lincolnshire Posey, Molly on the Shore, and Country Gardens. He has quite a bit of original work, though it's not as prolific as his folk music arrangements, but of his mo most notable original works are Children's March. Percy was also very fond of the saxophone. He thought the saxophone was the closest sound to the human voice, and it's even known in Percy scores, he would score sometimes up to six saxophones in one of his band arrangements. And that brings us to the end of our first ever composer profile video. I hope you enjoyed. Sources for all of this information are listed below. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a great weekend. Take care. See you Monday.